Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another tier list video. This time we are continuing the Sonic the Hedgehog list we made a while back, except the three of us got together and decided to play most of the games that we didn't go through on the previous list. Just as a reminder that you should probably watch the other one first, not just for the views, but also because you'll get an idea of what we do and don't like in the franchise. I personally like it whenever I get to play as Sonic. Yes, Joe, that is most of these games anyway. Before we start, we should say that we are not going through the Rivals games or Shadow the Hedgehog. Maybe in a part three, but these are the main ones we wanted to go over for today. There is something that we did want to bring up before we start today. We noticed some of you made some interesting comments on the other video. Some were just criticizing our placements while others were very insightful. We have decided to leave the original tier list as it was. Sure, there are some games arguably placed too highly or too low, but at this point we thought it would be funnier to keep it where it is. That is, except for Sonic and the Secret Rings as that is going into C tier. I'm not sure what some of us were thinking there. In addition to adding the games we didn't do before like most of the Game Gear games, we also will separately rank certain versions of the games like Sonic Unleashed on the PlayStation 2 or Sonic Colors on DS's Thinking It Over we should separate them since they are different enough. I think we can just get started with the list under the assumption that people saw the other list. We're going to go through the games on the older systems first, starting with Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine on the Sega Genesis and Game Gear. Even though I'm not a huge fan of the Genesis games, I actually kind of like this one. It's a nice puzzle game and it's rather fun getting combos and sabotaging the enemy. Then again, it's not as fun when they're the ones sabotaging you, of course, but what can you do? For those of you who haven't played it, it was Sega's way of getting people to play Puyo Puyo as the gameplay is pretty much the same, but with characters based on Sonic, even if he's not really here for whatever reason. I really like seeing all of the characters from that television show around here, but I could never get all that far. That's all right, Joe, this game is a bit difficult if you're not experienced with puzzle games, especially in the later levels, but I think this is good enough for anyone to enjoy, even if you're not into the series. It's also one of the only games where the Game Gear version isn't significantly worse than the main version as the graphics were downgraded, but still doesn't affect the gameplay. I'd say a B tier would be all right for this game. I was thinking C, but B is fine too. You know what else is fine? Scratching grounder, I wish grounder would blow on my hand and turn it into a pumpkin. Okay, we're moving past that and putting it in B. Next up is Sonic Spinball for the Sega Genesis and Game Gear. It's the same type of game, but with some different level design. I'd say the Genesis version is fine enough for C tier, but the Game Gear one is straight up F tier. It's so slow, and I don't think anyone has ever made it past the first level. I'd agree with F tier for the Game Gear version, but I'd say D for the Genesis version is better. It's pretty stiff and didn't feel good to control. I never had any real enjoyment out of the game, but at least think it is interesting enough as a concept to deserve some credit for trying. I suppose the music is the highlight, except for the option sounding like it's actively trying to hurt your ears. I don't have much to say on this one either. I thought those boss fights looked really weird and never finished this game. Yeah, I don't think we need to elaborate since if you like pinball, it's probably going to be fun, but otherwise there's not much point. Sega Genesis version goes in C and Game Gear goes in F. The next games are Sonic Drift and Sonic Drift 2. I think we should rank these together as they mainly play the same aside from adding a few more characters and stages in the sequel. I thought these were fun times when I finally played them on Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut and think somewhere along B tier is nice. It was a great racing experience, especially for the system. Are you serious, Joe? B tier? I know you're seen all, but these games are both F tier worthy. Half the screen is taken up by the map, and if you don't use it, then you can barely tell where you're going. The graphics are okay, I guess, but otherwise there's nothing fun here. Okay, hold up. I don't think either of these are right. Joe B tier is worthy of great games, or at least pretty good, and Donald, these are at least functional and kind of entertaining. Oh, really entertaining? I should have known that Democrats have no concept of fun since these games are basically useless compared to every other racing game in the series. I can assure you that nobody goes back to these games in general, especially when games like Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing exist. All right, you make some good points. I'll say since these two are at least fairly well made, but still not exceptional, I think we can settle on D tier. Does that sound good? That's way too low, but fine. I'm sure there are better games we can talk about. That's way too high. So just put it in so I don't have to think about them ever again. Yeah, okay, we're almost done with the Game Gear games so we can go to the Tails games. Have either of you played these? Yes, and they're both awful. Yet more Game Gear games worthy of F tier. Not so fast, Donald. You can't just dismiss these as F tier without talking about them at least a little bit. Let's go one at a time and talk about Tails Sky Patrol. I'd say this is maybe D tier as it's a very strange game unlike any other in the series, but isn't all that fun. I suppose the unique premise is more interesting than the other plots of Dr. Fat Egg, though it's a pretty slow experience. Nah, this is F tier and you know it. Just like Sonic Drift 1 and 2, absolutely nobody plays these games unless they're doing some video on obscure games vaguely related to Sonic or tier lists like these. I have to side with Donald here. Even in my wise old age, I've never been able to understand how to play this game. I don't think it's an enjoyable time and it's too slow to be anything in the Sonic series. Huh, it seems I'm actually in the minority. I don't want to put it in F tier, but I do agree that it's not all that great, even if I think it's better than YouTube. Finally, at least you're willing to put a game where it should be. Tales Adventure is the last Game Gear experience to talk about, and maybe I was a little harsh in saying F tier, so maybe it's worthy of D. It's a little better in that it looks like the game designers actually tried to make it into more of an adventure game, hence the name. 
but this still has no place being in the Sonic series. No, this is an F tier. I never understood how to play this game. I think that has more to say about you than it does the game. I think now I have to side with Donald as I think it's fine, but not anything too great. Let's just finish that by placing it in D tier as it is an okay game to explore, but I'd play almost any Metroid game over this and many other like it over this. Speaking of D tier, here comes Sonic Pocket Adventure. This game isn't really awful, but there's nothing to it that you can't actually get from Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which is much better than this, especially since the zones are taken almost exclusively from that game, except the final fight for some reason. Just put it into D tier. Are you sure it can't go into C tier at least? It does have collectibles that incentivize searching through the levels, and although the appearances are definitely taken from other games, the boss fights and level design are different enough to make it distinct. Joe, what do you think? What is Sonic Pocket Adventure? I've never heard of that before. My point exactly. It's going into D tier and we're moving on. Next up is Knuckles Chaotix. I really hope I said that last word right. I don't know what it means. Anyway, I think we need to put this into F tier. I have to be honest. I got so confused on where to go, and those rings just made it harder for me to get to different places. Finally, Joe is actually making sense. I didn't know you had it in you. The general game design is just really bad. It's really difficult to just choose who you play as in the ring system, although unique is very difficult to understand and is near impossible for a regular player to use it at its full potential. I think it's the hardest classic series game to properly go through the level. And speaking of levels, those are also needlessly complicated. You don't just go from one zone to the other, but instead it's more like a roulette and you have to just hope it's one you want to go to, and it's likely you'll be in each zone for a while as there are five acts each. There's also these really trippy special stages which were probably made while the game designers were on several illegal drugs. I didn't bother getting all of them and got an abrupt ending with Metal Sonic. I stopped playing soon after and never went back. You know what, guys, I agree. I do think it's actually great. In general, visual quality and the soundtrack is high quality, but the actual gameplay isn't good enough to justify it. I didn't like each player aside from Knuckles, and maybe there's just something I missed, but the other characters didn't make things easier than if it was just one player. It's sad. This is probably one of the most notable games on the Sega 32X, as it's just not good to play. Perhaps if it got a re-release with an option to play as one character rather than two and let you pick stages, it wouldn't be so bad, but as it is, I can't defend it. It may be harsh, but we're putting it in F tier. All right, on a bit of a more positive entry, let's go into Sonic the Fighters. This is a really weird game, as I never thought a fighting game would be made out of Sonic characters, but this exists. I'd be fine putting it into C tier. There isn't really that much to it, and I don't think a lot of the characters play that well, but at the same time, it's designed well enough to be engaging. I used to play this all the time with my kids on the Sonic Gems collection, but didn't go back to it all that often. It's pretty inexpensive, not that I'm worried about the amount with all the money that I have, of course, so if you still have a PlayStation 3 or Xbox One, you can buy it really easily. I think it's on this Lost Judgment game, too, if I remember correctly from more modern systems, but I haven't played it there. I beat Hunter so badly at this game he turned to cocaine. All right, we're putting this into C tier before Joe tells us any more details than that. Let's start off with the Game Boy Advance games with Sonic Genesis, which is going straight into F tier, no question. Now that we have most of the older games that aren't often as played in the franchise done, Let's move on to some actually more interesting discussions. I highly doubt anybody is going to have a deep defense about something like Sonic Drift, but the next ones might cause a little bit more pushback depending on our ranking. Let's go into Sonic Advance for the Game Boy Advance. This is what many consider to be an actual sequel to the Sega Genesis games compared to something like Sonic the Hedgehog 4, mainly due to the physics being fairly close to the Genesis games and having multiple playable characters with their own unique gameplay styles, like in Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Except this time, with Amy Rose being playable for the first time in a 2D game. Oh yeah, Amy Rose is my favorite character in these games. I really enjoy her and later Cream the Rabbit. They're just so fun to play as. Joe, if you don't stop talking about those two, I'm sticking the Pico Pico hammer where the sun don't shine. Hold up, Donald. I think another Sonic YouTube channel already uses that phrase, but otherwise I agree with your sentiment. To go into the game itself a little more, it's structured like you would expect with several zones each having a few axe boss fights at the end and special stages. All the characters have their own advantage, mainly the insta-shield flying, gliding, and hammer. These make it very fun to play with each character as it makes levels not feel exactly the same since they go through them a little differently. Special stages can be accessed by these specific springs which take you to this cylinder looking thing where you fall down and collect rings. Sorry to interrupt, but these are not good stages. While I appreciate that the stages are easy enough to access, I find the depth perception to be very difficult to understand as sometimes it will look like you should be collecting a ring, but then it turns out you missed it. I mean, they're not the worst, but it's just not easy to tell where you are compared to the rings and the controls can feel stiff at points. I never beat these special stages, so I don't know what they were like. Very helpful, Joe, thank you. I don't have a lot to say about the individual stages and bosses aside from the fact that they all are generally nice to go through and I never felt like any of them were very cheap. This was overall just a pleasant game to play through and I'd say it deserves an A tier. Just for Amy Rose, I agree with that ranking. I don't know about that, Barack. I'm not considering what Joe said for obvious reasons, but although I think the game is good, I don't think it's that great either. 
I didn't find levels like the Egg Rocket and Ice Mountain to be fun, especially climbing up that rocket for every character. Cosmic Angel Zone also had a lot more bottomless pits than I would like, so those lower the overall enjoyment for me. Definitely the best game we've ranked in this set today, but I wouldn't say A tier exactly. Okay, you make some good points with those levels, I'll admit. I haven't played these games in a while, so I didn't remember those giving me so much trouble. I may also be biased as this is my favorite of the advanced games. Joe, do you have any input on this at all, or are you too busy thinking about Amy Rose? Well, I was thinking about her, but I really liked connecting this to Sonic Adventure DX on the GameCube and interacting with the Chow. It was really fun to get more out of that experience with this game compared to just playing the Chow Garden in one game or the other. Oh yeah, we didn't even mention the connectivity it had. I'll concede to a B tier, but I won't go any lower. All right, I can live with B tier. Moving on is my favorite Sonic Advance game, that of course being Sonic Advance 2. Before Joe votes this into S tier because of Amy Rose and Cream being there, I should say this game has so much speed to it, and it's really fun to have such an exhilarating experience on a Game Boy Advance of all things. This is a fantastic game all around because of how it nails the type of speed Sonic should have that most games don't emphasize. There's all sorts of things like grinding and air tricks that let you move in ways new to the 2D games. That's all nice, but yeah, this is amazing purely because my two favorite characters, Amy Rose and Cream, are here. You were right, Donald. I suppose there's also things like the speed and different looking levels like Music Plant and Hot Crater 2. Playing as Cream was great as you were able to use this cheese chow to hit enemies and that was really fun. That and flying around places was good. So this is an interesting case because while I do like this game, there are quite a few things holding it back for me. One of that is the boss fights. These are very repetitive as most of them amount to your character running to the right, trying not to get hit and repeating. There's also the problem of if you get hit then, since you're moving so quickly, the rings will likely be gone by the time you're able to move again and you're open to getting killed by the next attack. That and the Egg Utopia stage in particular just hurt my eyes every time I played it. Having Cream's gameplay being different did help the fights become easier, but that's not the case with the others. Honestly, I don't think it holds the experience back that much for me, but I can see why you would think that. Even though I enjoy this game, I've never been the biggest fan of the 2D games, as you can tell by my opinions I've expressed in this and the previous list. If it were just the boss fights, then I would probably rank this higher, but what really gets me are the special stages. Well, to be more specific, the method of getting them. You have to collect these seven special medals in one act per zone in order to play the stage when you finish. The problem is that you can't miss any, and some of them are never going to be found unless you're looking for them. You have to get all of them in one attempt, otherwise you just have to start over again. Once you actually get them, it's a really fun stage design where you have to collect rings in a format like the Sonic CD stages, but also avoiding a robot that's chasing you. It's nice trying to get the rings in the stages, there's a lot of strategy, but it's just getting there that makes it really bad. I'll be honest, I only did all of this with Sonic and not the other characters because doing this once was way more than enough. In the first Sonic Advance game, I had a few emeralds by the end of my first playthrough, which made it feel like I was making great overall progress, but here there's no way I could accidentally stumble on an emerald with all the searching I have to do. Yeah, that's fair. I'd still want to rank this an A because of how fun the main game is, but doing the special stage requirements so often isn't very fun. Typically when I play this, it is just going through the stages normally without doing the Chaos Emerald stages or the medals, so that's probably why I enjoy it more than you did. Joe probably enjoyed it more than both of us for reasons unrelated to the gameplay. I think A is still a bit high, but if you're fine with Sonic Advance being B tier, then I'll be fine with this being an A tier. All right, everybody, let's move on to Sonic Advance 3. This is the best game ever since I can play as Cream and Amy Rose together at the same time. Oh yeah, I suppose there's other stuff too, but that's my reason for liking it so much. So I'm going to disregard that entirely and say I'm not a big fan of this game. The levels seem to be more hazardous as it's just easier to get killed in general. I don't remember much of the main levels or fights, so it didn't stick out to me as interesting. I suppose there's the Emerald guy that's related to Sonic Battle, but we haven't played that game, so there's not much connection we have to that. Yeah, I'm of the same opinion this time. I will say I do appreciate the effort the designers put into having each character work with another one that uses their abilities together. It's a neat mechanic that isn't used that much as most games just have characters only do one thing with the other if there's even more than one character playable at a time. I suppose they did that in Sonic 4 Episode 2, but I don't like talking about that game. To be honest, I didn't even bother with the special stages as I am not looking for 10 chow in each level for a chance to get an emerald, and I don't think you two did those stages either. There were special stages here. You are correct, I did not play them. I was lenient on it in Sonic Advance 2, but not here. I suppose we missed out on the last boss fight, but I hope the Sonic fans in the comments section won't call us fake fans for not doing that. I say we put this into C tier. Let's do it. Okay, now let's get to another great game, that being Sonic Rush Adventure on the Nintendo DS. I played this recently and found it really fun. Basically, Sonic and Tails go to Blaze's world and meets up with her along with Marine, some other person. 
They sail around to different islands to find new levels. They also get new boats to go around the ocean differently. That is very basic but accurate description of the game. I have mixed feelings about this overall based on what I played, which is quite a lot. For everything that is really fun about this game, there's another part that really is kind of weird. For example, going around to different islands can be difficult because it's not like a level select at first because you have to use the touch screen to look through the map, but you don't know where you're going until you get to that part of the map. At the very least, once you land on an island, you don't have to go there again to access the level as it becomes part of a menu to select levels. Another example is you get various ships to go through obstacles in the ocean, such as going a longer distance or through ice that blocks your path. It's nice to unlock new ships, but you also have to play levels to obtain resources to make those ships. And by that I mean you have to play levels multiple times to get those resources, which is a really strange way of extending game time. Not that you even need to do it that much, but the fact that you have to is unusual in this type of game. I do think the same way you do, although I think it's actually not as bad as you may think. Sure, I wouldn't say it's great there are obstacles in the ocean, but at least once you know where they are in the ocean, you can get around them easily. The actual ship type also determines the minigame you'll play along the way to the island. Usually they revolve around shooting things on the touchscreen. And before we move off the topic of the ocean, there are also various Chaos Emeralds you can obtain by racing this new character named Johnny. Honestly, some of these are pretty fun, but some of them are absurdly difficult as you have to boost a lot while not having many rings along with having to avoid Johnny and other obstacles. Once you fall behind, then you'll pretty much just have to reset. Can we talk about some other non-ocean things? I don't like the ocean ever since I got made fun of online for going to the beach while being the president, despite Donald going to the golf course every week while he was president. Anyway, there are also these missions that you can unlock by talking to characters throughout the game. I haven't beaten a lot of them, but they were pretty fun to do as side content. Yeah, I never really liked them, but they were harmless enough. Still weird how you had to talk with so many characters to actually play them. I suppose we could actually talk about the stages themselves. They're in general shorter than the ones in Sonic Rush, but there seemed to be more of them from what I could tell, especially from the missions. None of them really stood out to me, but I thought they were fine. I suppose some of the more mechanical levels were harder, though. The bosses were fine, and the later ones were really challenging. Playing as Sonic and Blaze was different like in Sonic Rush, though it didn't really impact my decision on who would play each level. Yeah, this isn't a popular game in the series comparing it to a lot of others, but I found this really fun. I'd say this is an A-tier game. Agreed. I don't know if I'd put it that high myself, but I can't argue against it. I really like Marine and Blaze, so A is good. It would have been S-tier if Amy Rose and Cream were there. Okay, Joe, the running joke has run its course by now. Oh, okay, that's fine, I'll try and hold back. Now we have Sonic Dash. I'll admit it's not a really great game, but it's the most time I've spent on one of those iPad things. I had a lot of fun rolling into a ball in a straight line. I'd figure you would be the one to like this game since there's only one direction to go and that's forward. It can be fun, but I haven't played it in so many years and it's weird that there's newer versions of this that I'm pretty sure are still getting updates. I hate it when the game crashes when I was making good progress and then I just have to reset because the game feels like I shouldn't win despite me deserving it like I always do. I will agree with you too in general, but there isn't all that much to talk about. Sure, there's fun to have and it's not expensive at all, but the crashes did hamper my experience. We'll do C tier since there's not much special about this one. All right, next on the list is Sonic and the Black Knight. This was another game on the Wii that used a lot of motion control, so it tired me out, but it was pretty fun. Basically, Sonic goes to the Camelot place and meets characters there that just happen to be Sonic character appearances, though they don't all act like the regular versions we tend to see. There's also some talk of Sonic's perspective on what's right and why he does things, but a lot of that went over my head. Shocker, I know. Anyway, you basically go forward and swing the Wii Remote to use your sword in a lot of ways, and it's really fun. You don't have to tilt the remote going forward just to move forward in the game, so that makes it a lot better. I never liked the motion gimmicks in these games, so I'll say D tier. I never really cared about Sonic's philosophical reasons. I just like playing the games to enjoy the gameplay, and swinging a remote like a sword doesn't really work for me. I will say, though, that with Main and Night of the Wind are some of the greatest songs in the franchise, and those alone keep this out of F tier. You really don't seem to like this game. I'm siding with Joe in that it is definitely better than Sonic and the Secret Rings, and I'd put it into B tier. I know there's quite a lot that is in this game that isn't all that interesting like the other characters being playable, but I never experimented with those except for Knuckles since he glides around and skips a lot of the stages. That and the upgrading of the swords wasn't something I spent much time on. I'm sure there are some really useful combinations of skills you can do there, but nothing I care to experiment with. I can't convince you to put it lower at all, typical Democrats. We're putting this into B now. Donald, let's talk about some games we mentioned before. The next four games are going to be ones that we talked about to some degree in the first tier list, although not to the same extent these are going to be the other versions of Sonic Unleashed Colors Generations and Lost World. Joe mentioned last time that he only played the previous generation game and we decided to play all of these to get a different perspective. The story for these games are pretty much identical, so we won't spend much time talking about them. Not that we have in this video so far anyway, but still. 
After playing this version, I don't have an overall greater understanding of the intricacies of Sonic Unleashed as a whole, though I do like some parts of this game more than the HD version. There are no hub worlds and the levels are split up for the Warhog, so they don't feel so long. The day stages, though, aren't as memorable as the HD version, though, and the level design doesn't look or feel as good. I'm being kind of vague, I know, but the HD version had many memorable set pieces for each continent, while this one, they look more similar overall. And a lot of the day stages are just way shorter or making you do something specific like collecting a lot of rings so they aren't played the same way you normally would. Yeah, I have to agree with you, Donald. I get that it was just hindered by being on the Wii and PlayStation 2, but if it isn't as fun, then there's not much to get around that. Getting the Sun and Moon medals was less obtrusive, though, and the Dark Gaia fight in Eggman Land was better overall. I think we can put this in B tier since there is a lot going for it, but less remarkable and memorable than the HD version. That sounds good, guys. Next up is Sonic Colors on the Nintendo DS. We didn't really talk about this one last time, but it plays a lot like the Sonic Rush games, but with no tricks like they have. There's the same areas as the Wii version, but the design is pretty different in each level. Honestly, I like this game a lot more than the Wii version and would rank it as S. Hold up there, old man. I think this game is fine, but it's not S worthy. There are way less levels in each area. I mean, technically it's the same amount, but some of them are just challenges in the existing stages, so it doesn't quite count. I think we need to slow down and talk about the game a little more in depth than we are. So this game has the same general structure as the Wii version, yes, though there's only a couple main levels per area like the Genesis games. There's the boss fights, just like you'd expect, but the boost mechanic is like Sonic Rush. You'll run into many of Sonic and Tails' friends that weren't in the Wii game, so that's neat to have. The main story is the same, including some cutscenes shrunk down to the smaller screen. There's also an exclusive Wisp fight at the end with Super Sonic, which was a great time. Honestly, I do prefer this in general, though I wouldn't put it in S tier. Despite having the Chaos Emeralds, you can't actually turn into Super Sonic during stages, which is disappointing. We didn't go after those red star rings like before, as we knew it wouldn't get us Super Sonic. I didn't really mind not having Super Sonic. My first time through, I had a lot of problems running into things and falling down stages, so being even faster wouldn't help me at all. Actually, speaking of the stages, I thought those were pretty good. Even the Wisps were nice, especially the ones exclusive to this version. This is the only game I can really tolerate them existing, so it was nice to have. All right, I'm fine with ranking this in A, if that sounds better to you all. Yeah, I'm fine with that one. Maybe if this was included in Sonic Colors Ultimate, more people could play it, and it wouldn't have been such a lackluster remaster. In fact, I've noticed that most of these games besides the Game Gear ones don't get released on modern consoles. Let's get on to Sonic Generations on the Nintendo 3DS. I will say up front, I don't like this game as much as the HD version, and I'm pretty sure you both agree. Seconded. Thirded. Did I say that right? Probably not, but despite me not preferring this game, I do think it is good in its own right. Aside from Green Hill Zone, all the levels are different. Of course, both Classic and Modern Sonic show up, though Classic Sonic actually gets the homing attack midway through rather than as a bonus, so the levels accommodate that ability. Modern Sonic also has the boost, which is his main difference since the levels are still 2D. Yeah, I never liked that. I get that it's because of the system the game was on, but I still don't like how similar the two play. The boost is the only real thing that separates them on a gameplay level. I also didn't like how the Genesis levels for Classic Sonic just reused the exact same level design. It felt lazy since it didn't really make sense for some of the design. Like in Mushroom Hill, there's the rings that normally would take you to a special stage, but here they're just smaller rings and the end of the level has a checkpoint to where the boss fight would have been, though it's not here. So there's just a checkpoint right before the end of the level with no obstacles in between. Okay, yeah, I didn't like that either. You're right on that. I don't know, I thought it was okay. It reminded me of the original games, but looked a lot better. Maybe it could have been better if it was different, but I didn't mind it. I can't agree to that, but let's move on. The other levels just aren't as plentiful. And I mean that in the way of there being two less levels than the console version. There's also the problem of this game being a missed opportunity to celebrate the handheld legacy. To be fair, there was a level from Sonic Rush and another based on the Nintendo DS version of Sonic Colors, but there was nothing from the Game Gear or Game Boy Advance games. I'd have thought it would have made sense to add something from those as there were a lot of unique stages to choose from. I am glad there is enough new content that isn't in the console version to make it worth playing, but it feels like it's on a budget. If I was the one backing this game, I would have given it so much more money and made it way better. The rival fights are back, but they're just in existing stages rather than in their own special areas like the console version, and just feels like they're reusing what they can to save time. I mean, I get it from a development standpoint, but that doesn't make it feel as special when I'm playing it. I will say the boss fights and special stages are actually pretty good. The Chaos Emeralds are in these stages like in Sonic Heroes, but they're actually fun since you can control where you're going. There's also Big Arm, the Bio Lizard, and Egg Emperor. These are actually better, or at least on par, with their original game. That and the Time Eater is way more fun here. Okay, I will admit the Time Eater is a better experience. It's easier to know what you're doing and feels like an actual challenge compared to just guessing how to boost forward, only for him to go six miles away right when you're about to hit him in the console fight. 
hey, did either of you do those optional challenges? I had a lot of fun doing those. I was in a meeting about something probably important, and I was just playing this the whole time, and nobody suspected a thing. They did ask me why I was looking down the whole time and who Sonic the Hedgehog was, but it was nice to get a break from president activities. No, I did not bother with the challenges during my presidency or afterwards. I'd say this is a B tier. It's not great, but also is still worth playing, especially to contrast with the main version most people have played. You know what, Joe? I don't think we've heard much from you, and you're more familiar with this game anyway. I haven't played Sonic Lost World on the Nintendo 3DS barely at all, so I'll let you handle that. Oh yeah, I really think this game is okay. Not amazing or anything, but I like it better than the Wii U or Steam version. It's the same general structure, but the controls are better and the levels are more fun. Mainly since they had more straightforward levels with side paths that got you good items that I really liked using, especially Super Sonic as he was so fun to move around stages with at his high speeds. The stages to unlock him used moving the system around, which I didn't really like since I got dizzy after a few seconds though. You know what I have played a little of this game and I really didn't mind it though. I remember some of the levels being really difficult, especially the extra levels at the end of the game and some of the snow levels being really long. Okay, yes, some of them were pretty long, but I thought they were neat enough. If there's one Sonic game on the 3DS I want to play, it's this one. I think B tier is good. I would put it higher, but Amy and Cream aren't here, plus I just don't have much interest in the Deadly Six's enemies. We're taking a little bit of a detour here and going over some of the racing games since Sonic is all about going fast, unless you're Sonic Labyrinth, so let's talk about Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. Honestly, this is the first racing game that wasn't absolute garbage. The main problem with it is that the sequel does pretty much everything better. I'd still say this is near a B tier because it's not all that replayable. I only ever bothered playing as the Sonic characters because we're doing a Sonic game list, so I thought it would fit more. There are a lot of tracks, though some of them can feel similar like the city levels or the casino ones. The layouts are different, but the look is too similar. I only played this game on the iPad like Sonic Dash, but I thought it was nice. I wonder how it played on the consoles. Didn't it have characters like that bird and bear or something like that? I leave it to have Joe not ever play the console game at all. Yes, there were actually exclusive characters except for the PlayStation consoles and I suppose mobile versions. I don't think it made the game that much better, so it's not a major issue for me at least. As for the gameplay, although it's pretty fun, I agree with Donald in that the sequel does so much better that it doesn't give as much reason for going back to this one. Sure, there are some missions, but I didn't really do those all that much. I never really cared that much for the other Sega characters. I mean, do a lot of people really care about that Knights guy getting in? He's appeared in like five games ever, and maybe two as a main character. Plus, let's be real, Sega knew what they were doing by having Sonic be the main focus since nobody else matters a tenth as much. I also found it weird how you had to unlock some of them, but at least the Sonic ones were almost all there at the beginning, and even the ones that weren't didn't cost many Sega miles when they were in the shop. We'll just do B tier to make it easy for us. Now how about we go to Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transform? This is a definite improvement on the previous game, and I think we all agree on that. Is there any real question that this should go into A tier? I don't think so, but we should probably talk about it at least a little bit anyway. I tended to like a lot of the tracks better, and the transforming mechanic was great to make the stage feel different since they were being traveled through in a unique way. I still think some of the characters aren't really needed, especially the newer ones that don't really fit. Why is there a real person and a Disney character here for no reason? That's probably why they had to take out the Sega part of the title. Not that it changed all that much, but still. I'd also be sure to look up certain details on which game you want to play before you get them. I'm pretty sure Sonic and Sega All-Stars on Steam only has the keyboard controls and not the gamepad ones. Meanwhile, this game has a Nintendo 3DS version that I think graphically is worse, but I forget if the gameplay is bad or not. I'm good with A tier. I didn't play any other version besides the iPad version again. All right, it's time for Team Sonic Racing, and I was a little disappointed by this one. While I thought it was inevitable for Sega to ditch the non-Sonic characters, I thought it would make the game better, but I don't think it did. The story is pretty forgettable, and the new characters aren't as interesting. Even Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed had better additions, and we didn't even mention most of them. For some reason, I'm really agreeing with you on these racing games this time around. If only our politics were this good, then I wouldn't have made up all that birth certificate stuff. Anyways, this game decides Zavok and the Wisps need to come back again, because why wouldn't they at this point? What I really don't like is being set up with two other characters that if they're not good, then they just bring your score down when you're doing the best. Last week, we all played a game together and I got first because of course I did while Barack was struggling for fifth place and Joe was dead last because he forgot what a video game was. I thought this was a staring contest game at first. That's why I didn't do so well. I got 11th place right after to make up for that. The point being, I think this was a big step down from the other two games. I'm voting for C tier. I'm good with whatever placement. I'm indifferent to this, so C tier it is then. It's not even a really bad game, just doesn't stand out as much as it should. I think that's all of the racing games, but now we're doing something different before going back to the main games. We're going to be talking about a lot of those games that have a lot of games in them. I think they're called a completion. That would be a compilation. Yeah, that. I don't think we'll talk about the individual games in as much detail unless they really are changed a lot. It's mostly just what comes with the completion. 
I'm going to start off with one of my favorites, that being the Sonic and Garfield pack. Along with having Sonic 3 and Knuckles, it also has the greatest comic book character ever, that being Garfield. I had so much time reading those comics every Sunday morning. I always had so much fun watching John and Garfield enjoy their day. Well, not Monday, but other days of the week. After the other animals like Odie and Nermal came in, I was so happy knowing Garfield had friends. I once cooked lasagna every single day for three months straight, just because I knew Garfield liked it. I always hated that Heathcliff copycat for also being a comic book cat. I even enjoyed those Garfield movies with Bill Murray. I vote S tier for this masterpiece. Are we really doing that? Well, it kind of makes sense. We put Sonic 3 and Knuckles plus this has a Garfield game and some other Baku Baku games, so we'll let Joe have this one. I don't want to be in between him and his unusual enjoyment of Garfield that I don't think he's mentioned before. I'm glad you both agree. Now we can go on to a less good completion, that being Sonic Mega Collection. This one actually is really good, especially the menu music being amazing, but unfortunately it doesn't live up to the Sonic and Garfield pack. All right, Joe, that's enough clowning on this game. Let's be serious. Even though I'm not a fan of the Genesis games that much, at least this is a good way to play a lot of them in one convenient collection. It is weird how the game makes you unlock certain games and why the Japanese version has some different extras, but really it's fine. I'd say this goes into A tier. It doesn't have Garfield in it, so I think it should be way lower. Joe, we are not ranking these games based on if they have Garfield in them, as that would make pretty much every game place below S in a way that's not fair. I agree, Donald, let's put it into A. Honestly, though, the next game makes this one seem almost obsolete, and that being the Sonic Mega Collection Plus. This is pretty much Sonic Mega Collection, but with some of the Game Gear games and save states. Granted, I'd say putting games like Sonic Drift and Sonic Blast would make this game be placed lower, but to be objective, this should be placed higher because it improves on the content, which was in the previous compilation. Is there any objection to putting this into S tier? If I can't keep it out because it doesn't have Garfield in it, then no. S tier it is then. Now we're getting into a weird one with Sonic Gems Collection. This has some Game Gear games, but the main purpose is to play Sonic R, Sonic the Fighters, and Sonic CD. For the time, it was very unique, but aside from Sonic R, all of these games are easily accessible in a better format, so there's not much reason for getting it. I'll say B tier just because none of it is really bad, just not necessary. Now, Barack, I'm going straight up D tier. Most of the Game Gear games here are the bad ones, and really, who cares about Sonic R at this point? Oh yeah, and I suppose there's Vector Man and Vector Man 2, but really, that's not going to change my opinion or anything. You know what, I'm willing to go into C tier because, yeah, now that you mention it, there's little reason to go into this. I suppose that also applies to Sonic Mega Collection, but the selection there was a lot better, so that's why it's higher. And now that I think about it, the game kind of taunts you by playing demos of other games that weren't on here, which means they could have just put everything into one collection, but just chose not to for some reason. All right, this one is going to be really easy. The Sonic PC Collection has Sonic Mega Collection Plus, Sonic Heroes, Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut, and Sonic Riders. Again, quality of these games aside, this objectively has the most games yet, and thus should be placed S tier since it has so much here to play through. Is the Garfield joke still funny? Because this doesn't have it, so it has to be put way down the list. No, Joe, the joke is not funny anymore. Donald put it into S tier. Okay, fine, I'll come up with something new that isn't Garfield related later. Anyway, next is the Sonic Classic Collection on the Nintendo DS. I have to say, this is probably the best portable collection because it has the main Sega Genesis games and not the screen crunch that Sonic Genesis had. I had so much fun in my youth playing these games when I was away from the television, and I'd say this is going into A tier. Hold up, Joe. Let's think about this before we rank this too highly. Although the games themselves are okay how they are, I don't think they should be ranked the same as Sonic Mega Collection when it has so many less games in a worse format, even though it is acceptable based on the handheld it's played on. I have to agree with Donald, as even though I liked playing this on the DS2, it shouldn't be ranked too high. I'll say B tier is good. If the games were enhanced in some new way, then maybe I'd be willing to put it higher, but since they're essentially identical, there's no reason to put them into A. Okay, fine, I'll do B tier then. It's time to get a few of the general Sega compilations rather than the main Sonic ones, this one being Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. I know I said this is a Sega compilation rather than just a Sonic one, but this is mainly other Sega games, despite the name. It has most of the good games on the system, which granted isn't a lot since the Sega Genesis had like 10 good non-Sonic games. Hey, it had more good games than that. Oh, really, Joe? Tell me when was the last time you played Alex Kidd or Altered Beast or Bonanza Brothers? There is no person in the world who decided they were going to get the Sonic's Ultimate Genesis collection because they saw it had Beyond Oasis. Okay, point taken. I will say, though, some of the unlockable Master System and arcade games are nice since they aren't as released as often. It has a lot of features like save states changing the screen size sorting games based on a few different preferences. There aren't that many Sega game compilations like this on the PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360, so this one actually stands out more. I've never heard someone say the Xbox 360 before, but otherwise I agree. If they had to add a lot of non-Sonic games, I'm happy with what was here in general. Having Streets of Rage, Shinobi Golden Axe, and Fantasy Star were good additions. I'm happy with an A tier. 
All right, let's go on to a different game completion with Sega Genesis Classics on more modern consoles. I have to say this one isn't as good as the Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. The games here are mostly the same as that, though, for the consoles they took out Sonic 3 and Knuckles, which I enjoy a lot, as you could all tell. You know, I don't think it's that bad, Joe. This is probably not quite as good, but like you said, it has most of the games as before and even adds a few others. I don't know if I'd say it deserves A tier as much, but I think it still could be appropriate. Nah, sorry, Barack, but I have to agree with Joe on this, which I hate doing, but he's right. The Steam version took out the main Sonic games because they had to make a better reason to buy Sonic Origins. Now, you can't buy the regular versions anymore, which is just bad business to restrict who can own things. Now, I get why you like it now that I say it like that. Even the basic presentation is worse since it's just in some weird kid's room, which isn't a great way to present a compilation. Sonic Mega Collection probably did this the best with its game select being so vibrant by comparison to everything else. I didn't care much about the extras there, but seeing all the extra effort they did really does make me appreciate it more compared to ones like this that take away more than they add. This is definitely going into C tier. I can't see a way I'm going to change your mind, so let's just move on. All right, everyone, let's finally get on to the most recent compilation that being Sonic Origins. Even though this is a good way to play Sonic 1, CD 2, 3, and Knuckles, there are definitely some problems. The physics are slightly changed, which do cause some issues to happen when they didn't before. There are also glitches that thankfully most were patched out, but some were really strange, like Tails being unable to go through Labyrinth Zone and some of the music tracks not being listed accurately. I mean, sure there are some good changes, like the spin dash in Sonic 1 and the drop dash as well, but it's just kind of lacking as the mobile versions that we didn't really go into had much better versions. I will say they did at least bring over some of those additions, which is nice. Oh, you don't really like this game all that much. I think it was fine enough and didn't notice any physics differences. I even got the Platinum Trophy, which I don't often get. Joe, this is like the easiest Sonic game to get the Platinum Trophy ever. I mean, if you were a kid and got it, perhaps it's worth bragging about, but not much else. I say this goes into C tier. Sure, some of the extras like those missions will be nice to go through once, but then when you spend half an hour to get those trophies, then it's nothing you'll be going back to. I have to say I haven't played this one all that much, but from what I have played, I do agree. C tier is fine. I don't really care, let's do C tier. But now we have Sonic Origins Plus, and this deserves S tier because you know who it's Amy Rose back at it as a playable character, and I've never been happier to play a Sonic completion or whatever you call it than now. No, Joe, we are not putting it into S tier for that. It does get all the Game Gear games, which again isn't inherently good, but does make it worth more on that alone. I'm still salty about buying the DLC for the original game when the Plus version just comes with those extras and Sega made no way to compensate for those who got it. I might be okay with putting it into B tier since some of the Game Gear games are worth playing, but no higher. Yeah, B is fine. We're almost done for the day, but we have to go through Sonic Superstars next. Let's just put this in D tier and move on. I did not just hear you say Sonic Superstars is in D tier. Are you serious? I know the game has problems, but it's not that bad. I don't know, Barack, I'm with Donald on this one. I expected you to not like this because you probably got stuck on the first boss fight, but I hope Donald would be a little more reasonable, though I guess not. To all the viewers who haven't played this game, it's the most recent unique 2D game in the series and features Sonic Tails, Knuckles, Amy, and a new character trip who have to stop Dr. Eggman yet again. It features 3D graphics and all new zones to go through. Sonic has the drop dash like in Sonic Mania, but the other characters are about the same as you would expect. Trip Once You Unlock Her has this double jump and her own unique storyline has some different paths in the level design. I didn't really like this so much. I get that Amy is here and that makes the game really good, but there was a lot I didn't like. Sure, the levels are unique, but I didn't like a good amount of them. Sky Temple was confusing to go through Lagoon City was pretty slow too. If Joe's the one saying something is slow, that must mean something. I also didn't like the Cyber Station and Golden Capital levels either since they were pretty difficult. Okay, they weren't that bad. I get that some of the character exclusive levels weren't as good, and that one where you were basically playing Fantasy Zone wasn't all that good, but most of them were quite fun. The Egg Fortress has you go back in time to finish the level backwards. The Press Factory Zone has the bouncing around if you're on the ground at certain times. Speed Jungle has a lot of high speed sections along with parts where you're falling and have to be careful where you go as you can get flung back up on the right path. Yeah, we know what's in them, but the problem is we generally didn't like a lot of parts. But fine, there are some good parts in the game, like the Chaos Emeralds actually give you some useful powers like the clones, the fire jump, or the time slow abilities. Unfortunately, over half of them are basically useless, and even the ones that are helpful can't save you from the levels just not being fun. I mean, not all of them are awful, but even if you get through them, you'll just be at some of the worst bosses in the series. Nearly all of them just make you wait for their invincibility frames to stop so you can hit them again. This is the main reason why I'm with Donald on his opinion. I had so many parts I got stuck on and had to get Kamala to finish the level just so I could move forward. There was the one where I had to hit him underwater so much, and the one where I had to fly around in the air and avoid shots, and the one in the desert with all those enemies and flying squares. Do I even need to mention the one with Fang in the lava area that takes three or so minutes if you're doing well? Or the one metal avatar character with all those attacks that make you fall down and start all over while the stage is breaking apart? Or how about the three worst boss fights in the series? I swear the Egg Fortress Fang Robot and Black Dragon took about three hours each. Skill issue. 
Don't skill issue me, you know how bad these fights are. Okay, in all seriousness, you're right, these fights aren't good, but they aren't all that bad. The Egg Fortress 1 for the main story is fine enough once you know where to hit him as those missiles behind him can be hit pretty quickly and his attacks are predictable. I will admit the Fang fights are needlessly difficult and there are too many instant kill sections. I felt such a great feeling when I finally got the big robot done with. The Black Dragon isn't good as it feels very luck based on if you'll actually hit him and some of the later attacks require too much precision than is reasonably okay to expect from a player, but I think some challenge is good since most of the games we've talked about aren't all that difficult. I wouldn't say that they would really take three hours though. I think it's nice how this feels like one of the classic games with a lot more difficulty, but I didn't like how hard they were through most of it. I didn't even go for those golden enemies or other achievements as I was having too hard of a time normally. I did go through them and they weren't that bad. I mean, a few levels were hard to go through all in one attempt after the gold enemy was defeated, but it wasn't insanely difficult. I say we put this into A tier. Now we're putting this into C at absolutely the highest. C tier, really? Yes, really. I don't think the game is good when pretty much every level has to end with a really difficult encounter with Dr. Fatso in order to move on. I'd rather play most of the other games on this list just because they don't anger me so much. I can already see that I'm not convincing you to put it higher, so fine, we'll do C tier even if it is too low. Okay, everybody, it's finally time we get into the last game for the tier list, and that's Sonic X Shadow Generations. I think we only plan on ranking Shadow Generations, though we'll mention a few details about the Sonic Generations port since there are some differences. And keep in mind, there's some level based on a place in the next movie which hasn't come out when we're recording this, so we won't talk about that. Well, I suppose we can rank the Sonic Generations part two since you have to get it in order to play Shadow Generations, though we will start on the changes to Sonic Generations itself. A lot of this is going to have way less arguing than before as we really liked going through these games when we played them recently. The main gameplay change was adding the drop dash from Sonic Mania, which is a nice addition. Other than that, it's pretty much the same game as before. There are some quality of life additions such as removing lives and also having multiple save slots. I was disappointed when they didn't include the original Sonic the Hedgehog, but not a huge deal overall. They included the pinball machine, but not the actual game people would want to play. It is kind of nice to have some of those, but really nobody cares about the drop dash. I've talked with a lot of people about this and they all say that the drop dash is useless. Classic Sonic has a way better spin dash for moving quickly and for modern Sonic you have to use the air dash before the drop dash and it's really unnatural to use it. Even then you could just use the boost and get way better results. At the very least it doesn't take away from the game at all so there is some use even if it's really situational here. That also applies to some of the chow that are now collectible but I didn't really care for those. Hold up everyone I need to mention something really important. The designers for this game covered up Rouge a little bit and also made changes to the script so I don't know what to feel about that. Cream and Amy are here again so I'm willing to let some censorship slide. Joe nobody should care about less skin showing on a bat that looks more like a human and if you really have a problem with that then you clearly you weren't playing the game for the actual gameplay, but just to fantasize about human-like animals, which you probably do often. Yeah, I never really cared about that. Usually I hate any censorship except for when it inconveniences Joe or if people online are criticizing me on Truth Social. Back to the actual game, my favorite part is the fact it runs at a higher frame rate and isn't so compromised like Sonic Colors Ultimate was. Most of the trophies are still here, although they took out some specific ones like hitting cars in City Escape Act 2. They did not take out the one for beating the Time Eater without getting hit, which they really should have done. All right, I didn't have much else to say about this game, so we might as well move on to Shadow Generations. If you haven't played the game, then you may want to click off or maybe press off if you're on a phone, because we'll be spoiling a lot. Even though the one time I tried Shadow the Hedgehog game was quite a while ago and hated it, this was actually a pretty good time. Just starting off with the story, it was kind of basic. Shadow gets sent to his own story that's affected by the Time Eater and Black Doom. I don't think it was done badly, but there's just not a lot to it. For example, there's Maria and Gerald Robotnik from before they were killed, but they just kind of show up in the hub world and don't do anything. Shadow briefly considers finding a way to keep them in the white space, but it's only ever brought up again at the last cutscene and doesn't become relevant again. That one part where a single tear gets onto Rouge while Shadow runs off at the end was a great moment though. Yeah, that was a bit more subtle of a way to show Shadow moving on figuratively and literally from their deaths, but it could have been expanded more to a better effect. I was just happy to see Maria. Okay, we're going to stop you before you say anything else about her. I do agree that the story was kind of basic and I thought the game would have explained how Shadow is going to places like Chaos Island and Sunset Heights when that takes place later in the timeline than he's currently at, but I suppose it wasn't bad. It was nice to see the continuity with Sonic Generations as having him show the events of losing to Sonic in that race and Rouge calling Shadow about not being in the main game. Yeah, it was all nice, but I was happy to see Big the Cat back. I don't know why he was here, but him and Omega were interesting to see in the white space. I hadn't thought about them not being in Sonic Generations. Joe not thinking about something, what a surprise. Anyway, I don't have much else to say about the story either way. 
I did watch those dark beginning videos before and they were nice, but nothing required for the main game. Should we actually talk about how the game is structured or is there something else in the story to talk about? I mean, maybe there is something else important but not enough for us to talk about in much detail. For the actual gameplay, it's really interesting as it's more of a combination of Sonic Generations conceptually but Sonic Frontiers in the controls. The levels themselves are Space Colony Arc from Sonic Adventure 2, Rail Canyon from Sonic Heroes, Kingdom Valley from Sonic 06, Sunset Heights from Sonic Forces, Chaos Island from Sonic Frontiers, and Radical Highway also from Sonic Adventure 2. I thought some of these choices were pretty good, though Rail Canyon is a bit strange since I don't think much significant happened in that level in the original game, but it was still fine to play anyway. The structure is the reverse of Sonic Generations, where the first act is mainly 3D, but the second is mainly 2D. I did really like those levels that they chose. I'm not the biggest fan of some of the games they came from, but these did feel better to play overall, which was nice. I didn't recognize most of the level design being the same, though. Maybe that was just me missing it. Yeah, I have to agree as I didn't notice specific sections taken from the level design as it was mostly new here. Not a complaint, just more of an observation. I will say it was weird that multiple levels had this black eye come up and change the level to Radical Highway before you actually play the real level, which kind of confused me. Also, I don't like how you have to hit those black eye things at the end of those sections, otherwise the game makes you play it again with no warning until the end. Okay, yeah, that was a weird design choice. I only had to go back to one level to do that again, but I agree. Each of the levels here feels generally better than the original games, though half of these games didn't rank very high on our list to begin with, so that isn't really saying a lot. This game actually made a level from Sonic Forces and Sonic 06 fun, so that immediately means it's fantastic. Again, not a high bar to cross, but yes. I did have something I wanted to bring up, though. It's more about Shadow than the levels. I found some of the design kind of weird and difficult to learn. Mainly using the triangle button to shoot a spear to hit a switch is that's not something I'm used to doing. That and some of the flying controls with those Doom powers are a little hard to understand. I may actually have to agree with you on this one. You can fly over a good amount of Radical Highway with the flying ability and it is a bit unusual to use. I thought it was easy enough outside of the levels, but when you're actually playing them, it's not easy to remember that it's needed sometimes. Those Doom powers in general were a good addition, I think. The one that makes you go into the purple water substance is a bit hard to control, but it gave Shadow some abilities that are more unique to him, which is nice. Can we get into the white space area? I was kind of confused when I went through this the first time. It had a lot of structures that were just like in Sonic Frontiers where they didn't have much connection to the loops and springs around them. I didn't find them bad, but just a little all over the place. It isn't something I'd rank the game lower because of it, though I had a hard time getting around sometimes. I actually agree to an extent, but I do prefer it over the white space in Sonic Generations as it has way more to do and there are a lot of collectibles to find which entices a player to look around more. It was more fun than a lot of the challenges you had to do in Sonic Generations. Speaking of which, there are challenges which will unlock keys to boss fights, but there's way less of them and are pretty good in general. Way more compact than the 90 you could do before. I never really cared for the challenges, but at least they weren't that bad. I had some fun using Chaos Control to stop the time and get constant S ranks every time because of it. That is definitely Cap, as I know you had way more B and A ranks than S, but yes, Chaos Control was fun to use and interact with the level being very still for a few seconds. I think the ranking system in general is good because you typically can't just get an S rank really easily, or at least not as much compared to Sonic Generations. Yeah, I didn't use it all that much for a while. I only discovered midway through the game that it helped with S ranks, but that's fine. How did you all think about the boss fights that came up? I really liked them. You're right, they were pretty good. I have to admit, even though I'm not a great fan of Sonic Heroes, just hearing what I'm made of startup before Metal Overlord showed himself was a great moment. I also found it interesting how Mephiles is aware of the events of Sonic 06 being kind of erased and wanting to exist again. It's a really weird moment, but still good. I wasn't a great fan of the last boss fight as it was pretty easy for the most part, except for needing to use the Doom Grapple thing a few times. I don't think you said that guy's name correctly, but I didn't think much of it since I never got to see much of Black Doom in the game he came from, but it was an okay fight, but not as special as I was hoping for. That in the Biolizard was different enough to be pretty fun, at least better from what I saw the 3DS versions fight. Yeah, I was hoping they would include the handheld game so more people could play it, but it's all right. I'll sign an executive order forcing them to re-release it before my term is over. That is not how an executive order works, but anyway, I think we should just put this game into S tier. We've barely even disagreed, much less argued about this, and I think it's a great way to end the list. I think that's a good decision. I'm overall happy with most of the placements, and I'm excited to see what our next tier list might be. Hopefully it won't be months in between lists. Yeah, this was a decent enough list, but there's a lot of games all across the board. Basically, this series is really inconsistent in quality. Also, any complaints to our list automatically will cause us to put Sonic and the Secret Rings in S tier. Don't get ahead of yourself, Barack. Okay, fine. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll be sure to have more videos uploaded soon. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And peace out, people.